Hey folks, this is the fighting nerd, Ray Chalinski, and his co-host, Jolly Roger, coming to you from the Resistance Bunker. How do you judge a folding knife? And I say judge, not choose, because choosing a knife depends a lot about an individual, on an individual and what they're going to use it for. So what I've got here is kind of a gamut of some really crap, of a really crappy knife, an okay knife, uh, a really okay knife for the price, and a couple of established name brand knives. To tell you what to look for in a folding knife, uh, in general, uh, now how much you want to spend and how durable a knife has to be depends on what you're going to do with it. But the first thing I'm going to show you is an example of a knife that I consider so badly made, made that it wouldn't be safe to carry or use for anything. And that's this thing. I don't even know what company made this. I suspect it's Frost Cutlery. Uh, Frost Cutlery are, is the company that uh, sells all those knives on those late night infomercials. Where, you know, you get like a hundred knives for a hundred bucks. And, uh, but I'm not sure it's frost cutlery. Now, I actually confiscated this from my brother. Who I think was using it as uh, in his tackle box. And he probably could have gotten away with that. But I didn't like the idea of him using this because it was so crappy. So I gave him uh, a better knife and grab this one and I keep this around for spare parts you can see it doesn't have all its screws in there uh, I have a lot of folding knives and sometimes I will buy one at a flea market or a yard sale or something like or trade somebody for one and it doesn't have all the screws so I have one of these crappy knives and I use for the extra screws and sometimes a, or a clip or something like that so that's why this thing was even around now the one thing, if you if you have a folding knife that has a locking mechanism, whether that's a back lock, a liner lock, a frame lock, a mono lock, a triad lock, whatever lock, the lock has to work. It has to engage every time you open the knife and it has to hold. Now, That seems uh, obvious, but a lot of people just buy knives and they say, well, it's a lock, it has a lock on it, and I'm just going to trust the lock. And then the lock fails and they lose fingers. So what I'm going to do, what I do with knives, is the first thing I do when I get a new knife is I just grab hold of it and try to shut it. And I have had knives. I had one knife from a very reputable company just go close on me. Uh, that was a Gerber. It was a Gerber icon. Uh, and uh, I sent it back. You know, I sent it to Gerber. They gave me a new one, and that one was fine. So, but, you know, accidents happen in the manufacturing process, even with the great com knife companies. Uh, but the problem with these cheap ones is that there is no customer service. I don't even know what company made this. So, if it just goes close on you when you do this, just get rid of it. It's not going to be safe. If it passes that test, and it is a knife that uh, I'm going to use for everyday carry, so I'll never know what I might have to use it for, I do the spine wrap. Now, this can be a little dangerous, folks, so be careful. And if you're a kid, uh, let's say under 18 for legal pur for purposes, just don't do it. But uh, hold it like this so if the knife goes closed, it's not going to destroy your fingers and you're not going to get cut. Take it, take it on the edge of a table or something hard, and just give it a wrap. You don't have to do Captain Caveman. But if it goes 
if it goes close on this, that you know, you know, for on that, then anything more than cutting, you know, a shoestring with a knot in it, or you know, opening in a package or something like that, it's not going to work. Right. Uh, then you have to look at blade wobble. This one, as you can see, has a lot of blade wobble, and in this one, you can't do anything about it. There's no real screws or, you know, I guess you could just probably some sort of special tool. I've never seen one where you can get in there and tighten it up. So if it wobbles like this and you can't tighten it, that's a problem. Because even if it you know, takes one whack and doesn't go closed on the spine whack test, you could be using it and the blade's wobbling and the whole, th the whole time the liner is wobbling out of thing and the, then all of a sudden the knife goes closed and you lose fingers. All right. Uh, and general materials is another thing. You can... Uh, take this and just look at it. This is toy grade plastic scales, uh, which could conceivably crack on you. Uh, you could drop this, and they would the, the scales might crack, and then you don't have a functional tool anymore. Another thing that you look for is liners on both sides. I uh, a lot of the cheap knives, and this is one of the reasons I think this is a, a frost cutlery knife, is because. Frost cutlery has a tendency to use these one uh, liners only on one side. Uh, the liner is this metal strip that you can see going down the frame here. And part of that liner is why they call it a liner lock. Uh, let's see if I can get this. That piece of metal goes over and slides in front of the blade so it can't, and uh, back of the blade so it can't go close, and then you have to pull it over. Right? But. It only has liner on one side, which makes it structurally weak, especially when you're dealing with toy grade plastic here. And I suspect that this liner is mild steel or uh, inferior grade steel, so it could actually bend. So if the frame fails, the liner, which is depending on the frame for support, will fail. And if the liner on a liner lock fails, the lock fails and you lose fingers. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, this this is a little like uh, friends don't let Fred drive drunk. Uh, friends don't let friends carry badly constructed knives. Now, you can, now, these things you can pick up for like three to five bucks. I've seen these things as cheap as three bucks, uh, or knives like this as a cheap as three as cheap as three bucks at uh, flea markets. So if you get one that's crappy, it's uh, not a big deal. Some people will buy these specifically because they're crappy, and if you lose them, it's not a big deal. You know, you throw them in your fishing box, you leave them covered with fish guts for all winter. You take it back out. You know. You can still cut your fishing line with it, and if you drop the damn thing over the side of the boat, you don't have to go in, uh, uh, go in after it because it costs a hundred bucks. But I just consider this one so badly made; it's not really safe to use at all. Now, this is another inexpensive knife, and again, this is a mystery knife. I don't know who made this. I actually found this in an IGA parking lot. <laughs> But um, this is an example of a cheap knife, cheap knife, cheap knife, not cheap knife, that is actually something that could be uh, carried by most people on a daily basis, and uh, they'd be just fine. I use this as my desk knife. It's a letter opener. Sometimes if I haven't stirred my glass of tea that I keep handy here all the time, uh, I'll, I'll give my tea an extra stir with it. This is just a beat-up knife that I, that's lying around that does all kinds of different strange things that, you know, I'm, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's just a uh, kind of a beater knife. But it's different in a way, and it does pass the spine test. Uh, but it's different than this one for a lot of reasons. First of all, although it only has a liner on one side of the frame, too, the frame is pretty thick aluminum. The scales are pretty thick aluminum. They're not going to bend, and they're not going to snap. So having that liner in the aluminum scales is not a big deal. So you have, do have to look at how the knife is constructed and what it's made out of. Uh, very little blade wobble, and if it does develop wobble, you just get a screwdriver 
the torque screwdriver and tight it here, which is really nice. And if you know, for the average person that's going to cut shoestring, you know, knotted shoestrings, or you know, maybe baling twine if you're doing yard work in the summer, or something like that, or opening packages, you know, the quintessential opening packages. Uh, this would serve most people just fine. Uh, I wouldn't use it for anything more than that. Uh, you could conceivably cut, you know, use this as the skin small game if you keep it sharp enough or, or uh, process a fish. Uh, but, uh, you know, anything, you know, more than that, this, was, this is not something that you could rely on, in my opinion, in a, you know, you know, a survivor man situation. Although you could probably get away with it as long as you understood what you were doing and didn't ask too much of the knife. But this is proof that you can have a useful knife and not pay a fortune for it. I don't know how much this one would cost, but I'm expecting no more than uh, than five or ten dollars between in that range. Uh, it doesn't have a brand name on it, but it says stainless china. And again, when it comes to steel, you know, it can say 440C, but 440C in a Gerber, even though Gerbers are made in China too now. The 440C in a Gerber, like the paraframe here, and 440C uh, C or uh, in a cheap knife like this one, different things because the heat treat is everything. Now, another example is the Gerber paraframe. You're getting up into here, and now Gerber is a pretty is a pretty uh, well known knife maker. This is, by the way, this is a Gerber paraframe. This is not the icon that failed. Now this is a frame lock. And now the frame lock is this: it doesn't have any handle scales per se. This is just an aluminum frame. And part of that frame here, you can see, I hope, is the lock. So part of the frame actually snaps in. Let's see here. Am I showing you the right side? Yeah. You can see when the blade. I get to try to get centered here. It just, the liner clicks in behind. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the frame locks. But basically, there, since the, the liner is the frame here in, in a lot of ways. So it's the same basic function, but there is no scale. Uh, but then again, this is anodized aluminum as a, a, in the frame. So this is a good solid knife. I... Uh, Carried a uh, Gerber paraframe for a long time as an EDC um, for a utility knife because this knife I carry for self-protection. That's all I use it for. I don't use the self-protection knife for anything but practicing self-protection and hopefully, uh, and I'm and I hope it never happens, but it would be used if I actually had to defend myself with an edged weapon. So, but uh, I replaced it with the, that with the CRKT here. Now, the frame lock, the thing is this, is that when you're holding a frame lock, you're, you're just a, by the pressure of holding the knife, holds the a lock in place. So, it's, uh, some, uh, some people argue that it makes it safer, but the problem is, knife is small, you're, even if you're gripping really, really hard, you're not getting that much English on it. You're not just not getting that much pressure. So, uh, if this thing does go closed on you, you are really going to get chopped up. But this is a mid-range knife. This these things cost I think fifteen or twenty dollars. At least it did when I bought it. But uh, this is where uh, more reputable companies go in. No blade wobble at all. There's no up and down play. That's a big thing to look at. And also, there is alignment. You can see that blade is pretty much centered right down the frame. Now, that helps with the lock, because if, it's, if the lock is off-center, I mean, if the blade is off-center, then it's not going to, it could conceivably not lock right in. I, I, how does it not lock right in? It could conceivably not get in the right position for the lock to engage. And again, you lose fingers. You see where I'm going here. Right. As of now, this, and when it comes to blade alignment, this is a famous 
really cheap, but really well regarded knife. This is a Walmart 495 special. Uh, there's a lot of these at Walmart. I have several. 495, you get a pretty doggone decent knife. I think these things are Ozark Trail. The, tra the brand name is Ozark Trail. Uh, and the Tan Flipper is the, probably the most renowned of the cheapo Walmart knives. Now, this passes all the tests. Spine wrap. Uh, there's no blade play in this thing at all. No up and down play. Five bucks. For, you know, well, $4.95. Now, the thing about this one is... The blade center, not so much. It's considerably off this way. Now, the thing of it is, you're paying five bucks, and this is very solid. The, the lock doesn't fail. So that, you know, the blade centering is not something that you just dismiss this knife for. Uh, this, for five bucks, for an average person just having a knife for those, you know, day-to-day -day things where you want a knife, you know, uh, peeling an apple, you know, making a uh, skewer for a cookout or something like that, uh, five bucks in this thing, and uh, I am actually a real fan of this knife. The only thing I'm questioning about is exact, it's mystery steel, so I don't know how, how really how durable this knife is. But for just average, anything more than the aforementioned everyday uses, just the basic stuff you need knife for, anything but any heavy use, I'd be leery of. But other than that, I'm actually, this is one of the favorite knives in my collection, even though I have knives that are much more expensive. It feels great in the hand, and it, uh, it is safe. It's well enough made where you don't have to worry about the... About the uh, the lock failing or it bending because you can see the one side of the liner is actually quite thick so now I am ashamed to say that in the flow of knives in and out of my collection I'm a collector knives come knives go uh, I don't have a back lock here, but all or a mono lock or a triad lock or whatever kind of lock you want. But the principles are all the same. You, you look for blade play. Will the lock work every time? Uh, and you look for the movement, the uh, movement up and sideways on the blade, up and down and sideways on the blade. Not a huge fan of back locks. They were fine when that was all there was. But um, uh, the, uh, any lock is better than no lock on a knife. But um, they really don't do well, in my experience, on spine wrap tests. Okay, uh, the last knife I have here is uh, on the higher end of the spectrum. The, this is the CRKT M16 ZFF. ZSF. This was my concealed carry, not concealed carry, concealed carry, my everyday carry for a long time, and I still love this knife. The only reason that I stopped carrying this is because for my personal protection knife, I started carrying a fixed blade. Uh, that, and this was uh, a, this is a big knife for a folding knife to carry all the time. And uh, I kind of retired it when I went to a, uh, a fixed blade knife and went to something smaller. Uh, my uh, Kershaw Emerson CQC8 uh, as a utility knife to carry around in my pocket. But now this is a, an example of what to look for in a knife as opposed to what to make sure you don't have. This is what to make sure you have. Uh, Instead of cheap plastic scales, this is Zytel scales. Handle material here called scales. Uh, and again, I realize that there are some people, you know, that for the night people that tune in to the fighting nerd, this is old hat. But there are some people that, you know, tune in for 
uh, nerdy stuff. It's, you know, movie reviews and stuff like that. So, yeah, so it has Zytel scales. Uh, so it's good. It's a good solid lockup. Liners on both sides of the frame. The liners are thick and they're steel. Now this one is a liner lock, but it's kind of an augmented liner lock. It has something called the LOX system, and LOX is an acronym that starts with the first names of the people that designed it. And what this thing does is this. Unless this tab is pulled back, the knife will not close, which is really handy. Uh, and now this knife costs about 80 bucks if you buy it directly from CRKT. I've actually picked this up for 40 off of Amazon. But this is a much higher end on the quality scale than uh, even the Gerber. Uh, CRKT makes some really great stuff. So you have no blade play, up or down. You've got an excellent locking system. Good materials. Right. But again, uh, at the time, I carried one knife. When I was carrying this, I carried one knife for utility and for personal protection. So I wanted to pay a little more for this. Now, I got a good deal on this. Like I said, I got it for half the MSRP. But uh, there's just a lot of things. There are things about a really high-quality knife that I can show you that uh, justify, can justify the cost. Now, you can't know this here but first of all the opening on this thing is incredibly smooth it is adjustable on for tension now that is a big thing for me because a knife if it, if the knife gets too loose then I have a lot of blade play if it gets too tight it doesn't open well uh, you should be able to snap a folding knife open. Now this one, had, one of the reasons I took, I, I chose this one, this has flippers. I like the flipper system because you can't flip it over really easily. And in this case, the flippers form a handguard, which if you're using, if you're going to be carrying a, a folding knife for personal protection is a big deal because it doesn't, you can't slide up and cut yourself. And it might even keep somebody's blade from sliding down and catching your face, sliding down your blade on a parry and catching your fingers. Uh, you can also notice that it also has studs. Some people like studs. This has both opening methods. But this stud also reinforces the knife because it goes up against the frame and locks it into place. So it, the knife doesn't fail this way. I really like that. Uh, so And uh, another thing, and especially when it comes to the reputable knife companies, uh, you know, CRKT, Cold Steel, Benchmade, Spiderco, even Smith & Wesson. Guys, there is no reason for a knife that has a pocket clip not to have a, uh, variable carry methods. I have this one rigged for tip-down carry. Tip-down right-hand carry. Tip-down, this one is closed, tip is down pointing down towards your ground because I, we, I you can actually use these flippers as a makeshift wave device and catch these on the lip of your pocket and do a one-handed draw. But not everybody's right-handed. Not everybody likes tip down. So you can move the clip for left, right, and tip up, tip down, carry. Knife manufacturers, if you're going to put a pocket clip on a knife, drill a few extra holes and make it multiple carry modes. But that's another uh, feature that you look on a better, for, uh, that's another one of the features you look for on a better knife. Now, uh, Benchmade has a monolock system, excellent system, it's just a button you move back and forth to disengage the lock. Um, Cold Steel has a triad locking system, this is a lock system. But the bottom line is, it ha the, the, the lock has to work. And a lot of the other things that you look for, you know, blade wobble and stuff like that, go to 
uh, blade alignment, you know, up and down wobble, side to side wobble. That all has to do with whether the lock works or not, folks. Uh, yeah, you want good steel, you want to make good materials, but on a folding knife that has a logging mechanism, you have to be able to depend on the knife. It has to, then the lock has to engage every time you open that knife. Right? You shouldn't have to check to make sure that lock is engaged before you go to use that knife. So, I mean, it is pretty basic. You do want liner, uh, if it's, uh, uh, no matter, even, even if it's not a liner lock, you want liners on both sides of the frame unless the frame is aluminum, like these two. You do not want cheap plastic, you know, Mattel, I call them Mattel scales because Mattel made all the toys when I was a kid. You don't want Mattel scales. You don't want any side to side blade wobble you and this one does that too you this you don't want any up and down blade wobble ideally this is not the biggest thing problem in the world but ideally you want the blade centered in the frame adjustable tension on the blade those things are the most important because that is all about safety a lot of that determines whether you can rely on the lock now, the other stuff, variable carry modes, uh, you know, nice smooth action. Um, you know, one of the more mechanically sophisticated locking mechanisms. That's all extra. But it's it's got to have, a, it's got to be solid. It's got to be solidly constructed. No plan, you know, but, you know, solidly constructed. And just, you don't want any wobble back and forth or up and down. Liners on both sides. Preferably the liner should be steel. And the lock must work. And as I said, you don't have to, to get all of that, to get the lock that works and the, the really basic stuff, the blade wobble and the solid construction, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money. You do. You might have to look a little bit to find the cheap knives that have those all of these attributes, but they're out there. So, you know, depending on what you're going to use it for, is going to depend on if, whether you want the extra features, and you're going to spend a lot more money. But the thing is, this, you know, and I'm going to. I know I've repeated this several times, but. Uh, the lock has to work, and if the blade, and if your knife is not constructed well to begin with, and it has a lot of wobble, and isn't centered right, or, you know, it's got a frame that will break, then the lock will fail. And when you have a sharp knife and the lock fails, you can injure yourself badly. So the bottom line is, is all the things that you want to make sure aren't happening with a knife that you have has to do with the lock failing, right? So that, that really is, is that, because if the lock fails, it, it could be catastrophic. So, you know, uh, I'm going to repeat this one more time. And I'm, I'm kind of hard on this because I know a person that got himself cut really badly because a lock failed on a really cheap knife. With the blade wobble, either side to side or, uh, or up and down, cheap frame, liner on one side, and poor alignment, and poor... Uh, blade alignment in the frame can make the lock fail and if the lock fails you're uh, it's it's bad so the lock must work it must work every time the knife is deployed right if you've got a knife that does that even if it's a cheap knife if you keep it sharp and it does what you're going to intend it to, what you intended to do and you don't expect too much out of a cheap knife you'll be all right
That's all I have. So, this is the fighting nerd, Ray Chalinski, coming to you from the Resistance Bunker. And he and his co-host, Jolly Roger, bid you good night.